Hello and welcome to another edition of Currently in Quincy. I'm Joe Catalano. On today's program, we will get all the details about this year's Porch Fest Quincy. It's coming back in September. First, though, we check out the weather and the news for you. Currently in Quincy, just cloudy out there. It's kind of damp, 65 degrees right now. The rain has let up for the moment. Could see some more showers around this afternoon, though. Pretty muggy with highs today, only in the upper 60s. There is a flash flood watch in effect and a river flood warning due to all the rain, mostly for the uh, Charles River in the Dover area. Could see another couple of inches of rain by the end of this week. Actually, it's pretty unsettled tomorrow as well. Less of a chance for a shower, but uh, keep the umbrella handy just in case. Still cooler than normal with highs only in the upper 60s. Starts to warm up on Wednesday. Still unsettled. Chance for a shower. Highs Wednesday in the lower 80s, and then the heat is on for Thursday and Friday with temperatures in the upper 80s, maybe low 90s here by Friday. Again, 65 and just cloudy in Quincy right now. In the news today, the Quincy School Department expecting the new De Cristofaro Learning Center to be completed by the spring of 2023. Now, officials said renovations on the old Colony Avenue building will begin this September or October, and they hope to hold an open house in the spring of 2023 prior to the start of classes that fall. The city purchased the building from Eastern Nazarene College back in 2019 and will transform it into a learning center for students with special needs from pre-kindergarten all the way through eighth grade. The building can accommodate 300 students. The city council approved $8.5 million for the purchase and another $14 million for the renovations. The officials say the city will save $350,000 per year by providing special education in Quincy. Center is named after former Quincy School Superintendent, now Quincy College President, Richard De Cristofaro. The water at Wollaston Beach in Quincy was safe for swimming 85% of the time that it was tested last year. Save the Harbor, Save the Bay recently released the results of water tests taken at state-run beaches from Nahant to Nantasket. Quincy's 85% rating was slightly worse than the 89% rating back in 2019. Three beaches in South Boston and Revere and Winthrop beaches all earned a 100% rating last year. Tenian Beach in Dorchester was a low at 79%. Quincy recently entered into an agreement with federal officials to spend $100 million over the next 13 years to eliminate pollution in the waters around the city. A new committee has been appointed by Quincy Mayor Thomas Koch, and they'll be meeting over the next several months to explore issues related to diversity, equity, and inclusion in the city. The nine-member volunteer committee was established after the mayor refused to fund a new director of diversity, equity, and inclusion that was approved by the city council. That position was approved following a series of public meetings and protests where residents discussed their experiences with racism and bigotry in Quincy. The mayor agreed to form the committee to study those issues, but has repeatedly stated he does not feel the issues warrant a full-time department. The committee will meet several times over the next few months and then issue a report in the fall. The mayor has said he would consider creating a new diversity and equity department based on the recommendations of that committee. Quincy Police Department has over 200 bicycle helmets to distribute to youngsters thanks to a generous donation. Attorney David White from Breakstone, White & Gluck in Boston recently hand-delivered those helmets as part of their Project Kids Safe campaign. In total, the campaign has contributed over 1,000 helmets to Quincy and almost 35,000 in total to area communities since the start of their program. Coming up, we'll have a chat with Walter Hubley on this year's plans for Porch Fest. That's next. QA 
KKTV serves the city of Quincy as its home for public and government access television. For 25 years, we've been the place to go to watch city council meetings, parades and celebrations, local sports and more. We're also a teaching facility where Quincy residents can come in to learn about how to produce television that they want to watch. Whether it's learning how to light our studio, how to use the latest software, or even how to use your new iPhone, QATV can help. For more information, call 617-376-1440 or visit www.qatv.org. Welcome back. Another sign of uh, normalcy here in 2021 is Porch Fest. Quincy is coming back a little different this year. It's in September um, instead of June, but nonetheless, it is happening September 25th, uh, noon to 4 p.m. And Walter Hubley, one of the founders of Porch Fest Quincy, is here to tell us all about it. It's nice to see you in person, Walter, first yeah, of all. Good to see you. I think we all need a little bit of normalcy after the past year we've so had. So true, isn't thank it? Thank you for uh, the opportunity to come on and yeah. talk about Porch Fest. Yeah, it's a pleasure. We all need the good Good, fun things to look forward to for sure as we talked about before the show this morning Absolutely. Um, did was there any kind of porch fest 2020 at all did anything happen no we okay. um we, we canceled it i want to say we'll put the notice out sometime around april that okay. we're we're kind of touch and go and we told uh, folks we'd update them over the summer but it became pretty clear that there was no clear sign of returning in 2020. right yeah when did the decision uh, come to make it in September of this year instead of normally? It's normally June, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah. usually the week after Flag Day. Right. But we, we took a look, I just want to say back in March, at the reopening of Massachusetts um, and tried to project when we thought, you know, as best we could, when we thought we might be able to do something like this. And, and everything that we were seeing indicated that we should probably kick it out a month or two just to be safe mm -hmm. and, um, and to not make sure that we didn't have to reschedule it and go through all that process of yeah. communication yeah probably worked out best for at least weather wise we had two heat waves in june and now we've had nothing but rain in july so well, well true yeah <laughs> and, and when i saw when i saw the flag day parade get announced i'm thinking oh we could have done it but you know can always look back and second guess yeah well right exactly yeah. what did the bands do in 2020 i mean, I mean really <coughs> any kind of live performance was just on hold right yeah, the, I mean, you did, there wasn't really much of anything going on for bands. I know a lot of bands started doing some online types of uh, performances. Okay. And um, I, I attended a lot of fundraisers and so forth for various causes um, that went virtual. And a lot of bands, I think, just did some online performances, yeah. often volunteering for causes to help out, whether it's local restaurants or local businesses, local charities. Okay. So that's yeah. what I saw a lot of. And I was, I was thinking to myself, you know, these bands are going to have a year off, potentially, some of them. So we'll, we'll see how uh, the registrations come in. So. Yeah, yeah, we're interested to find out about that. Um, mm -hmm. but, but the performing arts in general, uh, you know, you didn't hear a lot about it, but uh, they took a tremendous hit, both uh, financially and staffing-wise um, mm -hmm. as well. They, they had no venue, you know, for a whole year. Yeah, a lot of these large venues were, were just flat out closed. Right. And, and assembling in large groups was just out of the question for a long time. So, yeah, I, I think a lot of... Um, you know, the different, um, whether it's the um, stadiums or the ballparks and so forth, I mean, they make good money in, in normal times, but they were pretty much shut down. And th I think the effects of what we saw last year are going to be long standing. I agree. Yeah, I think Broadway still closed, actually. I, don't think I believe so. Yeah. Until the fall, yeah. So um, it's yeah. still gradually coming back. Yeah, but on the good side, things yes. are starting to reopen again. And yes. it's, 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 it's great to be able to be out, whether it's just going to a local restaurant, going to the park and being, you know, seeing people and, and being able to assemble again. It's, um, it's just amazing how you, you just miss it, really. It's true. So, yeah, it's, you yeah. really don't realize what, what you have until it's gone. No. Absolutely. <laughs> and I'm sure the bands are feeling that yeah. um, I mean, as well. There was a nice period where we were like, wow, suddenly my calendar's open. But then it's <laughs> like, wow, suddenly my calendar's still open. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Let's try and fill it up, right? Yeah. Exactly. Uh, for folks who don't know, and there's a lot of new people in the city, as you well know, mm -hmm. uh, give us a little porch fest history. Uh, if you can. First, the event, you know, the organization itself, and then mm -hmm. how it came to Quincy. Sure. So, um, Quincy Porch Fest this year will be held on September 25th, 3 o'clock to 9 o'clock. Oh, in, okay. Yep, in Wollaston Hill, Squanum, and Marymount. Okay. Um, registrations for people who want to perform or people who want to host a performance at their house 
opened, I think, July 5th, about a week or so ago. Okay. And they will remain open until probably early September. So there's still time to go on the website and sign up if okay. you want to have your band perform or if you want to have uh, a band host at your house or, or both. Okay. Um, and so we started, uh, Ian Kane and I started this event back in 2016, uh, where Ian came to me uh, with the um, information about uh, where he had seen Porch Fest done in other communities and said, hey, this sounds like a really good thing to do in our neighborhood, which is Wollaston Hill. Ian and I both grew up and lived over there. And live over there. Um, so we got together at my dining room table and just started putting together a sketch of what we might want to try to do and uh, when we might want to do it. We, we kind of thought we'd start out with maybe, let's find 10 porches and maybe 10 bands and pick a Saturday. And, and lo and behold, that first year we had something to the effect of 74 bands at 43 locations and uh, in 2019 I think we had about 130 bands at four neighborhoods okay so it, it has it has <laughs> taken quite well to the city I yeah. think people people really enjoy it and uh, the origin the origins of Porch Fest were in Ithaca New York mm -hmm. back in 2007 uh, there's a team there that started modestly like we did in Quincy, and, and it's just exploded. I want to say their event attracts somewhere close to 250 bands or something like that. It's, oh. it's been around for a little longer. Okay. Uh, and my wife and I uh, actually got the opportunity the year before last to go visit Ithaca, New York, for the express purposes of going to their porch fest. Yes. Uh, and what's interesting is that it's run very similar to what we do here in Quincy. Okay. In, th in fact, there's three neighborhoods, huh. and they're you know sort of a little bit apart, so you can't necessarily walk between them. Yeah. But they they cluster the three neighborhoods together, and um, it's a really nice event. And people are getting a sense for what it is. It's literally bands playing on the front porches of people's houses. Well, exactly. Yeah. yeah the, the there's uh, volunteer bands. Everyone's volunteering. Um, there's volunteer bands that perform on the front porches of homes in a few neighborhoods. And the idea behind it really is uh, to give the local musicians and artists an opportunity to um, display their talents mm -hmm. and also to build community by getting everyone together, which is why we have it in um, three uh, distinct areas, um, just so people can you know, walk around and get to know each other. And you know, music is one of those things. It's, it's very powerful because it really transcends all different demographics and cultures. And, um, I think people who otherwise might not have as much in common find they have something in common in music mm -hmm. and, and get to know their neighbors and get to know people from all over the city. Uh, I've heard from a lot of people uh, about how important this event is to them. Really? And yeah, yeah. It's, 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 been, it's been one of the, the best um, community events, community efforts that I've been involved in. Nice. Yeah. How did you determine uh, what neighborhoods uh, to have the performers appear in? Well, initially, it was going to be just Wollaston Hill, as mm -hmm. I mentioned earlier. Ian and I thought, okay, let's start this in our neighborhood. Let's right. get it going. But what we did after that was we took a look at where we saw the most sort of natural, organic requests for porches, where we saw the most volunteering. And that was by far in Squanum. Okay. Um, right out of immediately, a, a bunch of people in Squanum got really excited it's and very assembled on it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then after that, there was um, a large group of people in the Marymount area. And we took a look at those three areas and said they're very walkable mm -hmm. and there was the most interest in those areas. Okay. Um, so that's where we extended it. We didn't extend into Marymount until I think the second or third year. But Wollaston Hill and, and Squanum were the initial neighborhoods. Okay. So we really went where, where the interest was. Yes. So if other neighborhoods expressed an interest, would you look at those two? It, we would definitely consider it. Okay. Um, the challenge would be having enough performers yeah. to put in those neighborhoods because there isn't really an infinite amount of bands out there available to perform for free. And we really want to make sure that all these bands who volunteer their time and talents get a really good audience in okay. front of them. So it's, and, and also that people can get together and meet each other. Yeah, well it's, it's different in a neighborhood setting than it would be in a, like, like the stadium perhaps, you know. Exactly. Or even a large, uh, like pageant field or something. It's, it's just a different. Yeah, we, a we had a few over the years, a few kind of one-offs, maybe a couple of porches in a certain isolated area, but we found it didn't really translate well and yeah. didn't work out well. So we're trying to keep it within the three neighborhoods that are existing. And, and if we did get an influx of bands, we, we could possibly consider doing it elsewhere. Okay, yeah. all right, good to know. You never know where the future's gonna hold. What does it look like right now uh, for so, 2021? So we opened up registrations, as I said, on July 5th, and right now I think we have just under 30 bands who applied. 
um, and then it's about on pace with what we've seen in the past. Okay. Yeah. Any repeats? Oh yeah, I brought a, brought a list. Just, just so <laughs> oh good. Sure so the Gypsy Moths are back. This okay. is a local Boston-based band um, who actually, uh, on the independent radio circuit, they're seeing uh, a, a lot of, they're, they're hitting the top 10 charts. I, I see it's um, Europe, Asia, and even in Australia. No so kidding. they're, they're kind of going global on okay. us. Um, we have three a um, acapella groups that are going to perform on one porch. Um, Joyful 2, Copley Cats and Just For Today. <laughs> then we have uh, Up The Downs, which is a Quincy staple. Yep. These guys have been around for a long time. Um, a rock band with some Irish and blues and country influences. We have uh, Back To Back Is Back, um, a <laughs> uh, country band. They've been playing on Wollaston Hill, uh, kind of the Wollaston Hill, Forbes Hill area for the past couple of years. They're, they're a great, great group that keeps coming back every year. Um, we also have The Peasants, who have been killing it on Bellevue Road every single year, <laughs> and they're back again. Okay. They're, they're really good. Um, and then we have the Atlantic Youth Orchestra, so oh, sure. a, good, a good mix of uh, yeah. uh, different types of music. And then uh, we have the Porch Trio. So this is a um, avant-garde jazz group that actually start. They got together. They assembled for Porch Fest in 2016. Really? And I believe they played almost every year ever since. Uh, okay. Some very talented musicians with some global um, experience. So you're really inspiring, uh, you know, musicians to to find their talents and, and, and explore that. It, it is nice to see. Uh, so there's um, a group WSU that has been performed as in, in previous years, uh, which stands for whoever shows up. It's a <laughs> group of uh, bluegrass players. Okay. And I, and I joined them in, uh, in the last por porch fest. Very uh, impromptu, on a, right? On a porch, yeah. No, so not a lot of rehearsing for so that. So there, there's everything from established bands yeah. to emerging bands to people who say, "Hey, let's get together and." and do a performance at Porch Fest, and yeah, it's it's a it's a great. I love the mix that we're getting, both from music and, and place of origin. It's it's become a really great event. Nice, yeah. yeah. Do you need more? Uh, obviously, you need more bands, but do you mm -hmm. need more porches too? We definitely need more bands. Okay, uh, and we do need some porch volunteers. I I suspect that um, people have been doing it for years and you know past five. Well, this, we're going to this is our fifth one. That's right. Um, people have been doing it for years and you know, they might just be getting around to registering. So yeah. I'm hoping there are all of our existing porches from previous are going to return. Okay. Uh, and maybe a few new ones if we can have enough bands. Okay, good. Yeah. From a spectator point of view, um, how do I attend Porch Fest, Walter? You know, how do I uh, sure. get, to get to see the performances? So a couple of days before the event, we try to go f get, get it settled by about a week ahead of time. Okay. We publish the schedule. It'll be available on our website and we'll have uh, hard copies that we'll be handing out at the event during okay. the day, some volunteers. But you can always use it on your, on your phone oh. from our website, and yeah. there's actually an interactive map that will show you where you are and where, what bands are playing and when. Okay. So you would navigate it. I, I always recommend taking a look at the schedule maybe a night or two before and mm -hmm. kind of planning your uh, trip. You know where you want to go, sure. and so you can get the the most out of your day. Yeah, I know. In years past, you've had uh, some refreshments, uh, some food trucks. Uh. Yeah, yeah. We we were uh, we're working with the city to coordinate uh, some food trucks for this year. Okay. Um, I don't. We're not gonna. We did beer gardens in the past. Uh, we're not gonna do that again this year. Um, I think it just it concentrated a, a lot of crowd in one specific. Oh, Squantum, as I recall, there was a very popular, very popular spot. Yeah. And in same in Marymount. So yeah. we, we're I think and people are doing a lot of BYOB at their own places. So okay. um, we're, we're focusing on the food for this year. Um, yeah, so pretty, very similar recipe to the years before. Okay, and it's, are those locations on the, on the yeah. website oh, also? Yeah, okay. yeah. The, the, so on the map, in addition to seeing the performances, times, and artists, you will also see where the food will be. Yep. You'll see where you can purchase t-shirts, oh. which I'm wearing yes. today. Yes, yes. Um, and you'll also see where the porta potties are and, and things of that nature. Oh, so there will be facilities. Okay. Yeah, a, a lot of what we're, we, we sell these t-shirts to um, fund the event yep. and a big um, cost in the event is the porta potties and things of that Interesting. nature. Interesting. Okay, printing. things you don't even think of, but yeah. printing costs, website, yeah, sure. Uh, but porta potties are a big, big item. Okay, uh, yeah. so d obviously you don't want folks going into people's homes. That's that's you know. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people yeah. host parties for their friends and family. Yeah. But yeah, their their homes are not open for, you know, the general passerby. So we try to position a few, throughout the community. Yeah, the. Um, now the t-shirts, who designed uh, the, the logo there, Walter? So it was a collaboration oh, very okay. early on. Um, Erin Glennon, who was with the chamber and is, uh, does some independent uh, consulting, she helped out with the, the design. We okay. kind of just fed her the ideas on what kind of look and feel we were going for, and she came up with a great, a great concept. Okay. So 
and in fact, all the artwork on the website um, and our materials are all sort of her initial creative. Do you uh, need um, more volunteers? We definitely need volunteers. Okay. Uh, so aside from performing and yeah. aside from hosting, we do need some volunteers that will walk the festival and we will equip them with a stack of maps yep. with the schedule on it. We'll throw in a water bottle as well in a backpack and ask them all to, to also to make t-shirts available for sale. Oh, okay. Oh, that day? Yeah, on the day. Okay. I'd say we sell usually about half the t-shirts ahead of time, but the other half gets sold on the day of the event. In the past years, we've had people you know, bicycling around um, just with a, a basket on the front of their bike yeah. showing t-shirts for sale. Um, and I can't stress uh, how important it is to really sell these t-shirts because this is actually how we fund the event. We don't have any sponsors. We, we haven't created a sponsorship structure, although we've had a few uh, inquiries. Mm. But we'd like to kind of keep it grassroots roots and self-funding. So okay. that, you know, we're basically funding our event. Yeah. yeah. Is it a is it a nonprofit established up? Yep, we're, a, we're an established, recognized nonprofit. Um, I want to say going back a couple of years. So, um, yeah. So if if someone makes a donation, it's tax deductible, right. and yeah, we're we're a nonprofit. Okay, good to know. Yeah. Um, given the weather <laughs> as it has been, Walter, mm -hmm. I I have to ask: Is there a, is there a contingency for rain? We're from New England, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, so we you giving up porch rest umbrellas. <laughs> it, it's challenging enough to organize this all on one day. To, yeah. to talk about a contingency <laughs> contingency plan might be a little bit difficult. But we did have some weather a few years back. Uh, I think we were talking about it off camera yeah. a little bit earlier. But it, but we do also the, the House Net Community Council was spectacular that year. They immediately, as soon as they saw the forecast, the team down there, they called me and said, "Okay, we've got." <laughs> 30 easy up tents where do you need them? i remember and yeah it was they so saved the day they definitely they saved, saved the, the day, day. Great, great folks and in fact a lot of what we do we kind of model after what yeah. they've done well the they put on chowder fest so they know how to put on well a they know the day. fests that's right <laughs> <laughs> that's true <laughs> yeah. all right so it's rain or shine it's rain or shine okay yeah. Uh, let's hope for shine. Is it that's a Saturday, isn't it's it? It's a Saturday, yes. Okay. Yeah. And is it you normally three to nine? I thought it was earlier than that. So in the past the first year we did one to five. Yeah. And we saw a lot of people kinda of show up near the later part of the day. Okay. Uh, and then just noticing the attendance patterns, we're finding that the three o'clock hour is usually when people get done with whether it's the soccer game or whatever else they happen to have going on. Um, so we decided to move it out a little bit later. Oh, yeah. all right, all right. Yeah. So do your your Saturday errands and chores in, in the morning, and then porch yep, exactly. in the afternoon. Yeah, exactly. Okay, and it's still pretty light out. Well, it's at least till about seven o'clock that that time of. Yeah, so yeah. We, we we think it'll, it'll still be light out when we do the movie events in the park through yeah. the association that I'm with. Yep. Um, we find that we can't even start the movie until about eight o'clock in September anyway. Even in September, okay. Yeah, so yeah. it's just a little bit too light. So we feel pretty good about the, the okay. lighting of it, yeah. All right, yeah. so again, uh, September 25th, uh, 3 to 9 p.m., mm -hmm. Porch Fest 2021, yeah. porchfestquincy.org. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Um, so yeah, we, we, you can order t-shirts through the web website at uh, porchfestquincy.org. You can also buy them at the Townsend they have oh, them there, available okay. there. Also, uh, Chichia Mia, which is right across your parking lot, so yes. you have no excuse. You can get <laughs> over there real quick. Yes. Um, and I think P Pearl and Lime is sold out. And then also Perfections Chocolate, just around the corner, also has them available for sale. So stop in, get some chocolate, and pick up your shirt, and yeah, that'd yeah. be great. Okay, good. And support Porch Fest. And if you're a band and you want to, uh, to register... Yep, go to the website, okay. portrestquincy.org. You'll see uh, two links. One, if I want to volunteer to perform. I want to volunteer to host. Okay, it there you go. takes you through a series of questions, and it's simple as that. Can't make it any easier. Yeah. Speaking of um, your community uh, association, real briefly, uh, sure. concerts in the Saffer Park again this year? Yeah, we're bringing it back. A, a, a summer series that we started two years ago, I think it yeah. was, where every Saturday from I mean, 3 to 8, we are going to have uh, live music, uh, craft beer garden, uh, food available as well, uh, cornhole games, and we're going to do a cornhole tournament, a citywide term tournament on oh, one of the dates, which okay. I'll tell you about in a second. Throw down the gauntlet. <laughs> but, but just uh, c come on down to the park in Safford Park on Beale Street, uh, just at the foot of Wollaston Hill. Yep. A good landmark would be uh, the Wollaston Elementary School, or yes. Baby Cakes is right across the street. <laughs> yes. Everyone kind of knows where that is. Yeah. Uh, and yes, we're from 3 to 8 on Saturday, starting on August 7th, we'll be having, as I said, live music, food, drinks, and, you know, a lot of family fun. And All on right. the, I think it's the 28th, I believe, the I think it's the third or fourth Saturday, 
we're going to once again host the All City Cornhole Tournament. Okay, don't give away any more. We'll have you back later okay. on this month to talk right. more about it. <laughs> right now, it's all about Porch Fest. A lot going on. So yes. And a lot of great stuff. That's good. Thanks so much, Walter. Oh, thanks for having me. You're very welcome. Cool. Another quick break on the program. We'll uh, recap the forecast for you in just a moment. Keep the umbrella handy pretty much every day this week. Some more spot showers possible later on this afternoon. It'll be cool too. Temperatures barely 70 degrees. Unsettled again tomorrow. Not quite as wet as today. Uh, again, up around 70. And then things start to warm up here Wednesday with a possible shower low 80s. Really hot and humid for Thursday and Friday. Thanks again to Walter Hubley for joining us today. Thank you to our crew. Thank you for watching. Friday, it's uh, Ron Yakabuchi here from the Mass Hire South Shore Workforce Board. And a reminder, check out our website, qatv.org. You'll find all of our latest programs there. There's news and information, video on demand, live streaming, and a whole lot more. For all of us here at Quincy Access Television, I'm Joe Catalano. Please stay dry.